Alien is referred to a lot of times as the prime example for fantastic world building due to things like ships, aliens, Sigourney Weaver. Beyond visionary special effects, I think that a world building movie mainly refers to a deeper code that defines how a story is told, and that is what makes you want to watch it again and again. So, let's talk Alien. <laughs> defining world building as a movie with a code, something giving reason to everything that is happening on multiple levels. Tarantino actually talked about this when he criticized It Follows. He said that the problem he had with that movie is that your rules need to be so thought out that you go back through it and you can't poke holes in the logic. Instead, you go back through and it grows more and more because everything is woven together so well. I don't agree with what he says regarding It Follows, but I think the rule stands. What I realized watching Alien again is that it emotionally conditions you from the very beginning for everything that's about to happen. So I tried to figure out what the code might be that ties everything together in Alien. I think that is what makes it scarier than most movies. I think the code running through Alien is respecting value. And I mean that to say, you respect the value of a bear whenever you don't jump into their exhibit at the zoo you know your value and the bears, and when it comes to strength, you'd be dead. I immediately regret this decision. I think this fits because it maps onto character. We've got the xenomorph and the crew. The xenomorph, yes, it is the unknown. That is definitely there. But also, it represents value in and of itself. Even though everyone is terrified by it, the crew can only describe this thing in monumental godlike terms. The Xenomorph is scary because it encapsulates very few things. It's just kind of like a beacon of being terrified. So it gets more interesting when you look at the crew. And I would say that you really need to stop watching if you have not seen Alien yet. The thing that was bothering me about the characters in Alien was that there isn't a main one. Like, why is there no main character at the start of Alien? The movie does not treat Ripley like she is a main character at the start of this movie. We see more of Kane and Dallas at the start of this movie. I think the next question is, why does the movie then kill the people that it is treating like the main characters. We know that Ripley becomes the main character through survival. And I'm saying I think she's the only one that could survive because she's the only one who behaves according to the code of respecting value. Ripley is the only one in the group when in face of danger will analyze the situation honestly and then calmly and strategically decide the safest course of action. It's why everyone was treating her like the annoying by the book person near the beginning of the movie. When she was saying maybe we don't land on the planet or warning the scavengers that part of the transmission might have been a warning or not letting Kane in the ship after he was attacked by the alien. She's the only one that seems to take situations seriously and respect the fact that there is a lot of value in the things that they're dealing with and they can't be flippant about it. And that makes her a rule follower because that's the only way you can really ensure that you're gonna at least be safe and everyone else is kind of saying, screw you. But then everyone else dies and she lives and that's her respecting value. I mean, most stories actually normally hate the by the book person. So it's funny that she becomes the survivor, the main character. She's treated more like the rule follower the whole time this ruining the entire adventure, kind of like Leslie Nope in space. But she is constantly behaving as if she has to respect the value of everything that they're coming up against. And no one else really does. Dallas is flippant, Kane is eager, Lambert and Brett are distracted. Parker, I mean, he sacrifices himself, which makes him a good character, but not a main character. But obviously that doesn't cover everyone. So, we need to talk about Ash now, and you really should stop watching here if you haven't seen Alien. Ash is a character that takes Alien from being a really good movie to a masterpiece. He's an android assigned to keep the creature alive at the expense of everything, including the crew. This is what makes Ash a much more dangerous monster than the Xenomorph, and this opens the door to a whole other kind of scary that the movie has not dealt with yet. The Xenomorph is scary, but it makes sense. Okay, when it comes to the code of respecting value, even if you don't want to talk about that, it's a giant animal that sees you as food. That makes sense. But in that scene with Ash, the movie shifts the horror away from the xenomorph. You can almost feel that they're not worrying about it so much at that moment. And it transfers it onto Ash just for those few moments. That's when you see he's the more dangerous version of the xenomorph, something behaving only in a way that it was programmed to do. The point is, is that Ash is not the source of betrayal because he was programmed by corporate. The implication from Ash's behavior is that the bosses, the humans back on Earth that sent them, have the least regard of anyone's value when you're talking about anything in this movie. You have villains in the Xenomorph, but the one that gets the creepiest is the company's actions through 
Ash. It's that level of storytelling, talking about the same issue from a whole other perspective that adds another layer of horror in this movie. And the part that's so cool that connects everything is that that is literally what was being discussed in the first conversation in the movie, but they were doing it in a way that humanized everyone and you were getting to know everyone. I think we ought to discuss the bonus situation. Right. Brett and right. I, we think we ought to, we deserve full shares, right? You get what you contracted for like everybody else. Yes, but everybody else uh, gets more than us. So. I've known that Alien was great going into it. I've always loved Alien and I think the reason I love it so much and the reason I think it is scarier than most other movies is that it lives by a code. It has something giving reason to and connecting everything that is happening on a much deeper level. And the majority of all of that stuff is communicated without any dialogue. Ash's glance to Kane before the chest burster, that one in particular is very weird, which makes you wonder, whenever he was looking at all of those x-rays of what's going on, did he know this was, how much did he know was gonna happen? If you ask that question a second time you watch it, you're gonna have to watch it a third time so that you can actually look and see how much he might have known. Watch it again, tell me what you think in the comments, and be sure to subscribe to 5-Minute Critic for future updates on reviews and movie news.